Hi, I'm Valerie Riddell with the Tyler County Booster, and we're going to visit with State Representative James White mm -hmm. who, to help provide information on the D-SNAP program mm -hmm. for folks in the area impacted by Hurricane Harvey. Yes. Well, thank you for having me again, and I just want to thank uh, the Tyler County Booster for uh, all you're doing to, to keep people informed. There are a lot of moving parts here. Uh, see you have it on the front page of the mm -hmm. paper today and uh, to help people. In the Army, we always say if you're a, uh, a, a better fighting soldier is a better informed soldier. So, <laughs> all right. So all our people are soldiers right. in something. Right. And so uh, we want to make sure they're well informed. And this particular program is designed to help folks uh, replace food. Maybe they mm -hmm. lost an entire freezer full of uh, mm -hmm. produce and that deer mm -hmm. they shot last year. Yes. And they need some assistance to kind of right. rebuild the larder. <laughs> right. And as you well know, um, SNAP, it stands for Supplemental Nutrition um, Assistance Program, mm -hmm. right? Okay. And it used to be called food stamps. Used to be called food stamps, okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then when you put the D dash in front mm -hmm. of it, D SNAP, it's Disaster mm -hmm. Supplemental Nutrition um, uh, Assistance Program. And so a few weeks ago, uh, our citizens that are already on SNAP, mm -hmm. they were taken care of. We added a little bit, added mm -hmm. to their to our to their accounts to their mm -hmm. cards, so they're taken care of. So now we have other citizens uh, that are not on SNAP, mm -hmm. and just like you said, uh, Valerie, in some instances they evacuated, power went out, uh, house flooded, damage to refrigerator, refrigerator goes out. Foodstuffs, dry foodstuffs, canned goods are, are, are no longer good anymore. Mm -hmm. So they need to replenish. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then just think of all the other costs you have now. Right. You know, you're trying to get people to come out and clean your house out. You're 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 trying to get you gotta get the kids school clothes again. Right. You know, you got to like start all over again. Mm -hmm. So this is to help those individuals. So D SNAP. Now, it's important for folks to understand this. All of our counties in our area, particularly the ones in my district, Polk, Tyler, Jasper, Newton, and Hartney counties, mm -hmm. they have been approved by the president for as presidentially declared disaster areas. Okay, right. If you're a presidential declared disaster area, there, that, that, that could possibly put you in the position for your county to be recognized for DSNAP. Doesn't mean it has... Right. But it definitely qualifies for it. So, because this is kind of a slow rollout where they're yes, ramping up, and yes, don't do everybody at one yes, time. Yes, yes. And and here's another thing, uh, we're doing something a little different than what people think we always do. Uh, we're listening to local officials. <laughs> ah, <laughs> yeah, we're listening amazing. to local officials. Yes, we thank do, you. Yeah, we, we do that more than you think. <laughs> and so, in many instances, in many of these communities, even in my district, there's still standing water. Mm -hmm. Uh, citizens have still evacuated hundreds of miles away. Uh, you know, law enforcement, first responders, county leadership may not want those folks going back in those areas mm -hmm. for safety and security reasons. So when the counties are ready, mm -hmm. then they notify the governor and commissioner Charles Smith at Health and Human Services and say, we're ready now to be a de-snap County right. and understand this. I don't think very many of my counties are in this situation. There are some counties that that are that are uh, that have been hurt by this disaster. Even if you gave folks a million dollars on a Lone Star card, the stores are not restocked right. yet. Right. So it, it would be a, a waste of time, so mm -hmm. to speak. So when that local official, that local um, county judge, mm -hmm. and the emergency folks say, "Hey, governor." Commissioner Charles Smith of HHSC, we're ready for DSNAP. Right. Then that's when they set up a place uh, for us to bring the caseworkers in and to help folks. And and also to say this also, um, the USDA, the U.S. Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. they are the federal agency that does this program. Right. The state and the local governments, we implement it. So we're okay. doing it for the feds, mm -hmm. for our people that but are... But this is all the money you gave yes. them off your income taxes. Well, you can say, yeah, I like that. <laughs> you know, you, you give it with one hand and, and, right. and, 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 and set with another one. So it's a USDA program. And the USDA has guidelines. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to have a restroom in, in this right. place where you sign up for the DSNAP. You, you have to have an adequate amount of 
parking space, right? Mm -hmm. right. And then local officials want to make sure we're not creating a worse situation than we have now after the storm. So you don't want everybody rushing right. at one time. You have long lines out. People are falling out in heat exhaustion. Mm -hmm. So we want to make sure that uh, we don't put any more stress on our system mm -hmm. than it already has by mm -hmm. Hurricane Harvey. So let, let's talk about our home county, Tyler. All right. Tyler County. Okay, it has been approved for DSNAP. Mm -hmm. County Judge Blanchett has informed um, his his uh, state partners that they're ready. Right. So from the 13th to the 19th. Yeah. It started today. Day. We're taping right. this on Tuesday. Yes. So it started today. today. If you're at the front end of the alphabet, if you're right. not like you and, and I at the tail yes. end. And, uh, let me, and let me talk about that a little bit. And we can go through the schedule. But I, I talked with Commissioner Smith this morning. Mm -hmm. And while we're saying A through C, you know, I have it here on my, on my iPad. Um, when I first went to the legislature, I didn't need eyeglasses. Now, oh. after reading all these bills, some good, <laughs> some bad, I need it now, right? So on the 13th today, mm -hmm. it was A through C. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow, the 14th, is D through H. Commissioner mm -hmm. Smith and I talked about that, and he said, look, we're, we're not trying to over-micromanage if such mm -hmm. a situation exists. We just didn't want everybody showing up at the same time right. and, and creating uh, a situation that we couldn't handle. Tomorrow... If your last name begins with W mm -hmm. and it's D through H tomorrow mm -hmm. and you're passing by the SNAP office, it looks like you can get in mm -hmm. and, and get signed up, it's okay. Mm -hmm. So it's pretty much okay any day, mm -hmm. okay? We just want to make sure that we're being as orderly as possible. So for example, for Tyler County, mm -hmm. if you're a resident of Tyler County, right now this is the way it's running. So you got to follow instructions. I hate to say that. I hate to be go. Hate to put my school teacher <laughs> put your infantry school teacher officer glasses some, on. Get back on. But it's important uh, that we we just follow these instructions. Mm -hmm. We're tweaking it as we go mm -hmm. along. But if you're from Tyler County, mm -hmm. a resident, mm -hmm. you can only sign up in Tyler County. Right. You know, if you're passing by the the SNAP office in Jasper, it may be convenient. It may be common sense. It probably is, but we are in a government operation. Okay. Right. We have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you're in Tyler County, we need you to go to 930 Northwest Magnolia. And I think you said that was near the... It's uh, If you are heading north... On, to Colmenel. Uh, headed towards Colmenel on 69, okay. you're going to pass up the Sheriff's Office. Well, yes. And on the right, right mm -hmm. across from the Cavalry Church, mm -hmm. there is a Health and Human Services office there right. in a little strip center. So that's right. where we're going to go. If you live in Tyler or, County. Or just, yeah, just before you get to the sheriff's office, right? Yeah. If you're on the north end. North end. Okay, right. But coming it, from, from, yeah. coming from here on our office, because we're on 190, uh -huh. if you're headed north, George Lefkin, it's going to be on your right, mm -hmm. past yes. the sheriff's office. Okay, so over there. And and so that's very important. Uh, 930 North Magnolia in Woodville. And it does say people will need to apply on certain days. Again, today is A through C. And, and, and this is what I like about this also. Uh, we're listening to county officials, we're listening to mm -hmm. local officials. The the day of the time of the day is from eight in the morning to seven PM at night. Good deal. And even they will keep those hours on weekends as well. Okay. okay. So um, so today on the thirteenth you're seeing you you're a through C, mm -hmm. if your last name begins with A through C. Today was your day. But look, if you've missed this today, mm -hmm. no big deal. You can go tomorrow, mm -hmm. and then on September 18th and 19th, it's anyone. Right. Okay. So today, A through C, tomorrow the 14th, D through H, September the 15th, I through M, September the 16th, N through R, September the 17th, S through Z, and then on the 18th and 19th, anyone. Right. Okay. However, if it's just convenient for you. And there's not a line. You, you can does, stop in. If you drive by the office, it doesn't look like they're giving away George Strait tickets. Yes, stop you can stop by. in. Right. And but you can only do it in Tyler County if you're a Tyler County resident. Right. Okay. And there are some income restrictions. Right? Yes, there are some income restrictions. And um, uh, I, I, I kind of noticed that people kind of know if yeah. they are. Um, but basically, if yes. you live alone in a home and you yes. make about bring home about 1600 a month, yes. you will qualify for DSNAP. Yes. And then you can add about 300 bucks 
per yeah, person per person You're in right. your household mm -hmm. that gives you a rough ballpark for right. where you are if uh, that went by too fast and mm -hmm. you are comfortable on the internet mm -hmm. surf on over to our site and you can see and, 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 and the same as, as myself we've been posting a lot of this uh, a lot of this on mm -hmm. on, on the um, uh, on the Facebook and social media and they can always call the office at 409-283-3700 and at 409-283-3700 anyone should be able to kind of lead you in that direction. Okay. Yes. Well, good deal. And now that takes care of food. Mm -hmm. What about our folks who are not internet savvy who need help fixing that roof? Or okay, some other so thing? now you're getting into those FEMA issues. Right. Okay. Everybody's FEMA. loving on FEMA. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Kind of, kind of interesting how all of a sudden we start um, making up and walking, playing nice with the federal government, huh? Yeah. <laughs> you know. I, well, I love the federal government when it's doing what it's right. supposed to well, be. Okay. You once worked for the federal government, so you... Yeah, I was doing what we expect the federal government to do, fight wars. Right. That are approved by Congress, hopefully. Okay. <laughs> Always helps. Okay. But look, um, Federal Emergency Management Agency, FEMA, mm -hmm. um, disasterassistance.gov. It's important. To access any of these federal resources, mm -hmm. the start with disasterassistance.gov. Uh, today, I had the opportunity to sit down and talk with a lot of our school superintendents in our district and, and impressed upon them to stress everyone, disasterassistance.gov. Because when I'm finding out um, weeks and months after, when we're in the nuts and bolts of this rebuilding phase, mm -hmm. A lot of these other government agencies, when they come in with support and resources, they usually use a lot or all of the FEMA data that mm -hmm. we give them, right. individuals and governments. So it's important that we get as many people as possible to sign up. So even if I, I like my brother-in-law mm -hmm. has three refrigerators and when the lights went out for a day and a half, he lost a lot of uh, Deer, perishable, hogs, perishable raccoons. items. Yeah. So even though he has no intention of, of accepting assistance, mm -hmm. please go online yes. and, and fill it, enter. It's, it takes maybe five minutes if you're a slow I, reader. I, I, well, I don't know about <laughs> all that. It, it is a government operation. So in some instances, I've heard maybe 15, maybe yeah. up to an hour, hour and a half. But here's, here's another thing to think about. Um, you know, uh, on another, I think it was Beaumont Enterprise. Mm -hmm. I was reading the Beaumont. I, I read that newspaper too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Just read a newspaper. Okay. Right? I read all of them. Good. And they had a sort of a running count, mm -hmm. county by county in Southeast Texas, people that have registered to, on FEMA and mm -hmm. the amount of money that has already been identified. Mm -hmm. And my gut is that was kind of low, some right. of the numbers. Um, and I understand some stuff is still underwater. We still need, FEMA still needs to hire up people to get out and do these assessments. And here's another thing, folks. I'm getting a lot of calls where people will say, well, FEMA was here and I didn't tell anybody and, um, and just left. Right. That was a survey team. Right. That was a survey team. They may knock on a door or two for validity, mm -hmm. but they're not really the team that's coming in saying, knock, knock, knock. Okay, uh, Miss Valerie, your mm -hmm. case number is one, two, three, four, five, six. You said you had this, this, this mm -hmm. wrong, and they go, on. that's not really that person. Some of these communities in my district are totally devastated. Right. So they go through and they can already say, look, when this person calls from this county in this zip code, do not waste a lot of time asking them a right. lot of questions. Just say, thank you for calling. They check that mm -hmm. you're 100% right. damaged. So that's one thing. Here's another good point. Um, some people are calling and saying, FEMA has denied me. Right. And I've talked with my FEMA partners. They said, well, we don't think we've used the word denied. We say ineligible. Because mm -hmm. I have a situation where, in one instance, people are FEMA will tell someone, "Yes, you're, you, we, 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 we believe you. your house has been damaged," mm -hmm. and then they'll get a letter a few days later saying, "You're in, you're in, you're you are ineligible." Mm -hmm. Okay, that could be for a number of reasons. It could mean you that long government form. You mm -hmm. know how government paperwork mm -hmm. is. Maybe you forgot to sign something. Maybe you forgot to check a box. Right something like that. Mm -hmm. So we just got to ask you to get back into your application, call up FEMA, 
call up Congressman Babin's office, call my office so we can get you in the right, right. procedure. Sometimes you may have to appeal. Mm. Right. Okay. But ineligible, there is a difference in government speak mm -hmm. between being ineligible mm -hmm. and being denied. Right. And that word denied really hasn't been floated yet. Right, because we're, we're not far enough into the process to be denying but, people. Believe it or not, we're not. It's It has seen, you know, uh, I'll, I'll tell you this, um, Valerie, uh, this, this reminds me of being back in a combat situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, every day it's something different. Right. There's a different challenge out there that we have to tackle. It's just like being on the ground or it's just like being in football coaching. I mean, every mm -hmm. play is a new play and it's a different mm -hmm. situation down in distance. So um, if folks remember, uh, you know, back to Ike, back exactly. to some of these, you know, there were weeks and months mm -hmm. before we closed the deal individually with FEMA. So, right. uh, but now that doesn't mean we're going to allow FEMA to drag stuff out and take people through a lot of bureaucracy. Right. When we see that, we want to fight for you. Or it's kind of like if you were a MASH fan, you go through triage that right now yes. we're, we're dealing with the folks who it's life or death. Or well, they have no roof over their yes, house. Yes, like, yes, yes. So far that is all that's been addressed. Yes, and, and, and you're absolutely right. If you remember, I mean, it was just last week you and I were talking and we were still getting people. I was still people. wearing rubber boots a good yes, bit of the time. Yes, yes. And in many instances, we still have homes, mm -hmm. areas of Southeast Texas that are still underwater. So even if we did send FEMA adjusters out there, they couldn't get a full evaluation mm -hmm. of all the damage and hurt that you've mm -hmm. experienced because we can't see it yet. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a lot of moving parts here, right. but we're gonna help people get through it. But to your um, immediate question, disasterassistance.gov mm -hmm. um, is, is the gateway. And then, um, you know, th there's a series of steps that go along. I think eventually um, more of our counties will get these DRCs, Disaster Recovery Centers, right. where they'll have the Texas Workforce Commission in there. They'll have FEMA in there. They'll have the Small Business Administration in there. They'll have HHSC in there with, mm -hmm. you know, SNAP, DSNAP and all of that, okay? Mm -hmm. So when those get up, then people will not only be able to call FEMA or... Um, go online, they'll be able to go in and see someone on person, in person. Also, um, as we get further into this process, I think you will see SEMA, FEMA, excuse me, mobilize mm -hmm. a lot of their um, remote mobile units mm -hmm. right. that can get around. They're probably is not as extensive as a stationary DRC, mm -hmm. okay, but they can do some things. Right. Also talking with the governor, Throughout the this disaster area, from Corpus to Sabine Pass, mm -hmm. from the Sabine River back to the Brazos, there will be a number of, like, uh, not necessarily disaster uh, recovery centers, mm -hmm. but uh, Texas disaster management offices mm -hmm. as well for local officials, um, you know, government officials to kind of, you know, combine resources okay. and talk about things. So I'm gonna tell you, the governor's has, has really ramped up the state on this effort. And uh, there's just a lot of moving, not a lot of moving pieces here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So in, on your website, there's a, what I've been jokingly calling uh, Representative White's to-do list. If yes. you need all, all kinds of uh, faith-based mm -hmm. and volunteer organizations that yes. can help mm -hmm. if it, folks need a tarp on their roof or something yes. like that. that. That's something that I've, 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 I've heard uh, mm -hmm. recently about the, the blue tarps. And so we'll, we'll be getting on the horn and see how we okay. can get those. It will rain again. Right. Hopefully not 52 inches in a day. Right. But, <laughs> but root, some people, their roof is still damaged. Right. And, uh, and to prevent any further damage, they need to have that tarp because, uh, you know, if, you, if you're not still doing the necessary things to make mm -hmm. sure there's no further damage, that could put us in jeopardy of getting the type of support you need from FEMA. Because FEMA right. would say, well, you knew the, there was a hole in the roof. You should have covered it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, so instead of giving you this, mm -hmm. well, we're going to give you this because, you know, this other, you know, it damage came, is... Came, is 
came yeah, after. All right. Came after based on negligence of the person. So we want to make sure we get those blue tarps out there. Okay. Well, give us your district office number one more time. Yes. 409-283-3700. All right. 409-283-3700. And if you need any of a rewind on any of this, mm -hmm. it's going to be on our YouTube site for a while. Mm -hmm. and Or you can give us a call at 409-283-2516. Yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yes, ma'am.